States aerobatic champion and the present world aerobatic title holder, leading the United States team to an unprecedented victory in international Sonny Everett first became involved as a member of our air show community at the tender age of 14, when a photo of an air show parachutist that he took was published in American Airman magazine. But it was as an air show announcer that Sonny built his reputation in the business. His satin smooth voice, combined with his exhaustive knowledge of aviation, helped him develop a style well suited to the air show environment. And Sonny's vast experience and knack for coming up with just the right impromptu remark at just the right time made him enormously popular with the show organizers who hired him. In the mid-1970s, Sonny Everett drew on that experience to create Air Show America, a self-contained aerial circus that featured the top air show performers of the time, including Leo Laudenschlager, Ed Mahler, and Bill Barber. For years, Sonny has also served as the air show community's unofficial historian. In 1987, he published Flyers, a coffee table style book that documents the industry's barnstorming roots, its growth through the 50s and 60s right up to the newest developments and most visible performers of the 1970s and 80s. Sonny has always been a vocal air show advocate. He was deeply involved in the production of Cloud Dancer, an air show oriented feature film starring David Carradine and Jennifer O'Neill. He was also a frequent guest on television's Mike Douglas show, where he explained and promoted air shows. More recently, Sonny has helped the new Smyrna Beach Balloon and Sky Fest reconfigure its sponsorship program, an innovation that helped the show win a gold award in the inaugural ICAST Pinnacle Awards program. Ladies and gentlemen, in recognition of his work as an announcer, author, and air show advocate, please join me in welcoming Sonny Everett into the ICAST Foundation Air Show Hall of Fame. Now, before we, we bring uh, my pal, Mr. Sonny, out, uh, I was uh, encouraged by John Cudahy and the staff to come up with a little behind the scenes, uh, typical Sonny Everett uh, expertise and professionalism. You saw on that film that uh, he got us on, he got the air show community on the Mike Douglas show. And that was back in a time when there were generally three major channels in the US. Certainly not like now when we're inundated by hundreds and hundreds of them. So if you got a chance to be on a TV show on one of the three stations, especially a primetime rated talk show each and every day, it was a, a real honor and a real accomplishment. And uh, Sonny was able to do that. At this, that particular show, the Mike Douglas show, that uh, we were doing that year, Sonny was nice enough to ask me to come in to uh, lend assistance. And we did it uh, on the Miami shoreline at Collins Boulevard and 72nd Street in Miami Beach, and uh, they had created an outdoor stage there. It was called, the series that week was Mike from Miami Beach. So uh, the, the idea was that uh, our airplanes wouldn't fly over the water. We'd bring in skydivers like the award-winning Cheryl Stern. Bill Barber would fly Sonny's Super Cub, the Shasta Cub, with a rope ladder down, and stuntman Eddie Green would uh, fly over the ocean. They had two bathing beauties from Miami in about uh, waist-deep water holding up poles with a, a big sign, Mike Douglas from Miami Beach. So Bill Barber came along with Eddie on the bottom of the, of the rope ladder and broke that sign, and that's how they opened the show. So because we were outside, uh, we were that week inundated with the greatest stars in the nation who came on live to see Mike Douglas on his show. So uh, the co-host, because they were down on Miami Beach, was the great Jackie Gleason. Uh, just an, a great character, larger than life, and he brought a lot of fun to that. Uh, on that show that week was Lauren Green, and I, I must tell you, after our guys flew, courtesy of Sonny getting us all there, He's seeing us backstage, and he looked at Sonny, looked at me, and he said, you men are marvelous, in that deep voice, uh, Lauren Green of Gunsmoke. Now, as we go along, Robert Goulet was there. He was uh, three quarters to the wind most of the time, but he could still sing pretty good. And this is really something. Sonny and I are just off backstage, 
and they're going to announce the next act. The name didn't mean anything to us. There was a little space, the way I remember it, between Sonny and I, and there was a guy laying on a skateboard that went by us out to the stage at a high rate of speed. That's how he got to center stage. It was the first TV appearance of the comedian Gallagher. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my great friend, a true professional, Marvin Armitage, Sonny Everett. Danny, you said that so well that I promise that I won't tell the story about the $65 chili dog you ordered in a taxi cab in Miami Beach. <clears throat> I want to uh, thank the, uh, do you have to stand there and hold that? You make me nervous. <laughs> I want to uh, thank all of you, especially the uh, nomination committee, and I want to thank Mark McGinn for throwing my name in the hat. And uh, it's uh, really been interesting. I, I do have one special announcement I want to acknowledge, and that is Mr. Hugh Oldham, who day after day, especially here at the convention, has proven once again that he is an absolute perfect pain in the ass. <laughs> my pal, Hugh Oldham. Oh, but seriously, I got to get this over with, or John, I know he wants to get his tux back in before the rate goes up. <laughs> I want to uh, tell you just a second, acknowledge a couple of other people that were my influences and my uh, mentors. Bill Barber, uh, Ed Mahler, big Ed Mahler, as they call him, with the men in special. 42 years later, nobody else has tried using smelly smoke. Can't figure that out. Work for Skin Bracer. Bill Sweet and Pappy Covelt. Those were my main influences other than my dad as I was growing up. Uh, most of all, if you look at the bio and you listen to that video and everything else that Danny said, they talk about being a pilot, a writer, actor, etc. What I really am is an observer and I've been observing air shows now for a long time. And <clears throat> I've seen a lot come and go. I've seen some good ones and some bad ones. Uh, but most of all, I've enjoyed the people, getting to know the people. 51 weeks a year we may be competitors, but there's one week a year this week that we're all family. So here we are. I want to uh, mention that, go ahead. As a young man, I had the opportunity to see some of the greats of the, of the second generation of airshow pilots fly, and that would be guys like Rod Joslin, Lindsey Parsons, Bob Nance, Bill Adams, and uh, a few others. My dad was a pilot. We would, that's what we did on weekends, was go to air shows or fly-ins. So I sort of was lucky in that way, and I feel so lucky today. Also, what I've been observing over the last, oh, 25 years since I wrote the book, what am I going to put in the next one? <laughs> well, I have admired greatly the creativity, strength, and drive that is exhibited by Mr. Skip Stewart. He is top notch in my book. On the flip side of that, also top-notch in my book, but a whole different perspective, uh, Wing Walker, who lost her ride, she decided to uh, buy an airplane and go in business for herself. And that's Miss Carol Pylon. I have never seen such determination in my life. <laughs> Danny was talking about our TV appearances. Uh, still, to this day, one of the uh, best places to be is on CBS either Sunday morning or on 60 Minutes if you want to get seen and get recognized. 
and I really admire Melissa and Rex Pemberton for the effort that they put in just a few months ago. So in order to keep John happy and uh, everything else going, I am going to say one line from the back of my book, Flyers. The last words in it were, and the journey continues. Let's keep it going. Remember the small air show. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Sally. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here.